Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Gents Sense. So over the years, I haven't done too many videos based on a particular note. So like top 10 fig fragrances, citrus, bergamot fragrances, wood fragrances, stuff like that. I've had a lot of people tell me that I should do that, but I just never have. But one thing that you will know if you've stuck around on this channel for any length of time is that I kind of got a thing for iris fragrances. Like, I like them a lot. And today I'm going to be doing a list about a particular note. And that note is iris. I'm going to be going over 10 of my favorite designer iris fragrances in today's video. So let's go ahead, let's jump into it and let's tackle that most amazing of notes, iris. So Iris has become much more popular here lately in men's designer releases. For a while there, you could find it across a couple of different lines, but it wasn't used heavily. It wasn't all over the place like we've seen here lately. Now, not all fragrances that feature Iris, of course, are going to be considered Iris fragrances. A lot of those Iris plays more of a supporting role. And a couple of the fragrances I'm going to talk to you about here today have Iris utilized in that way instead of being right at the forefront of the scent. But regardless of that, back years ago, Iris was not very commonly used in men's sense, but as I said, nowadays, much more common, especially in designer releases. Now, before I jump into this top 10, I'm going to give you guys those codes again. Gents10 is the code. It's, it's actually just one code that you can use at twistedlily.com and maxaroma.com to get 10% off your order. And luckyscent.com still has the code Gents2022 for now. Yeah, we're, we're in 2023, but I'm not going to argue. So 10% off Lucky Scent if you use the code GENTS2022. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. This is in no particular order, although I will be starting with the most obvious one. Uh, and it seems like every time I do a list where this fragrance is included, I'm like, let me go ahead and do that one first. Like Beetlejuice. Hey man, it's a good fragrance. Uh, yeah, so the fragrance is Dior Homme <laughs> Intense. I feel like you can't really do a designer iris list and not feature Dior Homme Intense. I feel like you just kind of have to do it. Look at this one, nicely aged. The juice on the inside there is starting to look even more ambery colored than when I first got it. So Dior Homme Intense and Dior Homme Original, both of those I would say you could put in this list pretty comfortably and, and just say, yeah, those are two of the best iris fragrances designer wise that have ever been made and will ever have been made. Now, of course, Dior Ohm is now called Dior Ohm Original because it was replaced by Dior Ohm 2020, which is why I'm just including Dior Ohm Intense in this list because it simplifies things. This is basically the pinnacle of that creamy lipsticky type of iris, you know, where it's got a nice sweetness to it, a little bit of powder, comes across very formal for a moment in time. It was very hip to describe this fragrance as a metrosexual fragrance, which is kind of an interesting way to talk about it. But yeah, Dior Homme Intense, absolutely fantastic. I feel like Christian Dior, you know, is trying to move away from the iris. I mean, it, it's not something I feel like. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? So I don't know how long Dior Homme Intense will be with us. So I will cherish every moment. Just playing, I bought multiple bottles, I'm good. After that one, let's go with a different type of iris, Prada Loam. <laughs> and what a surprise, it's a, another line of fragrances that uh, the writing on the wall is there for. Now, truthfully, if Prada Loam and Tints were still around, where you could find that anywhere in the US, I would have that in this list over Prada Loam. I think that one overall is a little bit of a better fragrance, but Prada Loam is still really good. This one known for being an office fragrance, more of a powdery, soapy, clean type of iris. It's not that creamy, rich iris like you'll find in Dior Homme Intense. This one is lighter, more sparkle to it. Prada Loam, a great scent. Really enjoyed this one ever since it came out, and I think it still stands strong. Still works really, really well. Let's go with one that's a little bit more off the beaten path next. It's Cavalli Womo Silver Essence. Now, this one is not as much straight up an iris fragrance as a bunch of the other ones here, but the iris is noticeable. This one is kind of a mix, you know, it's not as heavy as something like uh, Dior Homme Intense, but it's definitely not as soapy clean as Prada Loam. Good amount of Tonka in this one, a lot of sweetness to it. 
it is very smooth and it is partially fresh as well you know it's one of those fragrances that's not trying to go all the way fresh but it's also not trying to be like really heavy so it gives you great versatility this one sometimes you can find at discounters for a very good price actually it used to be much cheaper but these Cavalli Womo fragrances have been getting harder to find unfortunately which has made them uh, go up in price and sometimes they're sold out at discounters and not very easy to find another line that's just kind of not doing so hot oh man i started this off with like three fragrances that have basically the grim reaper knocking at their door that's <laughs> this is big brain start the video talking about how iris so much more popular nowadays in men's fragrances begin the video with three fragrances that are on the chopping block let's go with one that's not on the chopping block at all one that's selling very well Le Mal de Parfum from Jean-Paul Gaultier the iris in here more of a supporting note it's used to modernize and boost up that Le Mal DNA that this carries over from the original it's kind of a modernization a twist on that style of scent it's not as powdery as that one it's not as old school smelling i mean i know a lot of you are going to be like Le Mal is not old school that fragrance came out what like maybe nine ten years ago trust me there are things that i see where i'm like yeah that didn't come out that long ago then i look it up and it's like that came out 25 years ago <laughs> i'm like <laughs> so yeah it's a modern take on that style of fragrance made more for fall and winter time great versatility once again big compliment puller love this stuff now if your home intense is like designer iris fragrance 1a this one is designer iris fragrance 1b it's valentino womo intense and when this came out a lot of people did directly compare it to dior home intense they were like yeah it's basically valentino's dior home intense now does it smell exactly like Dior home intense of course not but is it in that style absolutely it has great quality it is again more of a formal fragrance good performance more of an evening scent has a, a great leather note to it which helps offset it a little bit versus Dior Homme Intense and a good amount of vanilla as well so Valentino Womo Intense this stuff is fantastic and for a while people thought this was discontinued completely dead dried up and gone and you couldn't find it uh, really anywhere but then it came back so it was not discontinued they were just switching it into the new bottle style essentially because these old ones the atomizer was just built into the bottle the new ones this is a cat but valentino Womo intense still around even though most of the time you have to buy it at retail if you want it it's not often at discounters and it's one of those ones that when it pops up at discounters sells out now i feel like i gotta bring this one up next it's gentleman eau de parfum this fragrance i have like in my personal rankings kind of just right there just barely underneath dior Homme intense valentino womo intense i mean i don't really think of it as an inferior fragrance i love this stuff it's going to be an iris closer to those two scents the way the iris is used but on the whole the composition here does take it its own way on its own path so with this one you get a good amount of vanilla kind of a dark vanilla you know a touch of powder to it some tolu balsam you have lavender in here as well you've got a bit of spice but it's it's not like a big blast of sweet spice this one stays pretty dark i mean kind of mysterious if you want to describe it that way good performance very classy as you would expect a fragrance with the name of gentleman to be this is one of the best iris fragrances currently on the market designer wise and i do want to say that the whole gentleman line or most of it very very good if you're into iris now i'm highlighting just gentleman eau de parfum but uh, gentleman eau de parfum reserve Privé, very good as well has a nice boozy sweetness that one uh, gentleman boise very good a little woodiness added in on that fragrance uh, gentleman eau de toilette intense that one is great for spring uh, potentially summer fall it's a little bit fresher but the gentleman line in general very good for iris after that i want to talk about armani code absolute gold now when this first came out it had these little signature bottles which is why mine has that little signature on it it's not a real signature it's just the original design so if you get this nowadays it's likely not going to be a signature bottle but that doesn't really matter and this is another one that uh yeah if you want it you should get it there's no real easy way to say that uh yeah if you want this get it now before it sells out and goes away forever so absolute gold essentially takes uh, the absolute formula which is my favorite code and then adds in a little subtle iris classes it up even further smooths it out slightly not quite as 
poppy off the top as Code Absolute is, you know, not quite as zingy, but a wonderful scent for fall and winter time that kind of straddles that line, you know, gives you a nice classiness to it. But at the same time, it's, it's kind of playful, sweet, a compliment puller. So this is that type of scent where you don't want to go full on formal, but you don't want to be coming across too immature with what you're wearing. Love this fragrance. Very, very good stuff. Now, this one is one of the newer entries into that classy style of iris fragrance, but this does come across a little bit more powdery off my skin than Dior Homme Intense, Valentino Homme Intense, and Gentleman Eau de Parfum do. It's Narciso Rodriguez for him, Blue Noir Parfum. So this one has Tonka, Musk, Suede, uh, Cardamom in there along with the iris. It doesn't project quite as much as the other three fragrances that I just mentioned, but the performance here is still good. It lasts a long time off my skin, so there's nothing to complain about. So this one is going to draw those comparisons to, as I said, Valentino Uomo Intense and Dior Homme Intense, but it doesn't have the vanilla, the leather that Valentino Uomo Intense has. It doesn't have the ambrette, that little bit of pear off the top, the cedar. Uh, that your own intense has I, I guess technically it does have like leather and suede as notes in this fragrance but they're not pronounced like they are in valentino Uomo intense i mean to say still though very very nice release one of the better iris scents out there now this fragrance luna rosa ocean once again by prada features iris but kind of like lamal le parfum it's not really the focal point of the whole scent. It's a supporting note, it does its job well, provides a nice smoothness to the fragrance, a roundedness, uh, a clean kind of nature, but it's not right there in the front. Like Prod alone, the iris is right there. You can tell right away that's what the fragrance is based around. With Luna Rosa Ocean, not as much. So this one has lavender as musk, bergamot. It's a blue fragrance, so it's made for versatility, compliment factor, all that stuff. You know, it's the type of scent that's made to be worn, you could say. And I myself find it to be a really enjoyable blue fragrance. It doesn't smell ultra close to any of the other big scents out there. You know, the Dior Sauvages, the Blue de Chanel's of the world. It kind of carves out its own path, as I said, a very clean, somewhat aquatic, hence the name Ocean Blue scent. Really good. And the last fragrance is the scent Le Parfum. Now this is the second fragrance in the Descent line to feature Iris. The first one actually featured the Iris much more prominently, and that was the scent Parfum edition. It was a special edition, all black bottle. It actually had a nicer presentation, like the box was bigger. And that one, the iris was really, once again, front and center, the focal point of the fragrance. I thought it was very well done. Unfortunately, just impossible to find anymore because they basically released it as a limited edition. And then they said, okay, good enough. We're done. Thanks. Uh, but Le Parfum, this one, is an actual full-fledged release instead of just a, a limited edition. The iris here is pretty well balanced. It's not too deep or heavy. It's actually more of a, a woody scent, of course, with the Meninka that the scent line is really well known for. So it's more like Meninka and Woods and then a nice supporting iris that helps give it more classiness. It is one of the better fragrances in the scents lineup. So if you're a fan of the line, then absolutely check this out. And it's gonna be quite different smelling than what most anybody else is uh, wearing out there nowadays, unless they're also wearing the scent lip profile. So there we go, some iris fragrances in the designer realm that I think you should check out. Some of these are getting harder to find, but as of this video, you can still usually find these 10 without too much trouble. So I wanted to tackle iris first, mainly just because I have such a soft spot for it. Uh, as time goes on, I'll try to tackle some other common notes and, and uh, themes across men's fragrances. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.